I was teaching medical students genetic determinism. That's mm -hmm. a belief that most people on the planet are still holding. The public is still grappling with the idea that genes control their lives, that genes turn on and off and regulate their health and their illnesses. And, and, and when you tell a story like that to people, what are we telling them? Uh, what we're telling them is that they're victims. I mean, as far as we know, you didn't pick the genes you came with. If you don't like the traits, you can't change the genes. And the genes apparently were turning on and off without you being involved. Oh my God, I'm not in control of my life, but my genes are in control of my life. What was being passed through my family was in some sense programming my life. Now consider what this means to the average person whose family has things like cancer, or diabetes, or cardiac conditions attributed to genes. Oh my God, I, I, I got these genes from my parents. Oh my God, I, I'm going to get cancer. I left the university because my research revealed that the environment was controlling the genes. If the genes control you, then you're a victim of your heredity. If the environment is influencing your genes, well, then you can be a master because you're the one that can adjust the environment. My research revealed the fact that it wasn't genes that were controlling life, and I had to make up my mind. Do I want to go in the classroom and tell students that genes control life knowing that they didn't? And the answer was no. So I resigned my tenured position at the university because I realized it led to a belief that they were not in control versus following this new vision that showed that environmental uh, signals were controlling the genetics, which allowed an opportunity for us to change the environment and therefore control our genetics, which makes us more of a master. And I disconnected from mainstream, but they disconnected from me. They thought I was a crazy man. Uh, and in fact, after I left the university, I had tenure and, and resigned, and I started to work on the mechanism. This is one of the issues why I had trouble with my colleagues is well, they were talking about genes turning on and off and controlling biology. I bring up the environment. That's what led me to understanding the cell membrane, the skin of the cell, as the brain of the cell, not the nucleus, which the textbooks still say is controlling biology. The, 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 the idea of the nucleus controlling biology is because the nucleus contains 98% of the genes. And if you say genes turn on and off, control themselves, then the nucleus is like a brain where the genes are like neurons making decisions. And therefore, that's why the nucleus is represented as the brain. My research said, no, the nucleus is not the brain. So matter of fact, in the 60s, I was doing experiments removing the nuclei of cells. It's called enucleation. What's interesting is if the nucleus was the brain of the cell, then by definition, if you remove the brain and throw it away, the organism's going to die. And yet my cells live for months with no genes in them. Removing a nucleus and throwing away the genes did not stop the cell from living or behaving in a very complex manner, which by definition says life was not an accident. Life is a lot of controlled behavior. If there are no genes, then what was controlling the behavior? The cell membrane was considered by biologists to be nothing more than like plastic wrap to hold the cell together. And yet my research revealed that that simplicity was actually elegance, that that simplicity was actually the basis of an information processor. The cell membrane is a carbon-based information processor. It reads environmental information and translates it into biological behavior. So it's an interface between the outside and the inside, the membrane, the skin. My research revealed that it was controlling biology. So I was so excited about all this and I wanted to get a scientific audience to play this off of and say, listen, here's this great idea about the membrane is the brain. And so I went back to the school that I resigned from, University of Wisconsin, in the medical school. And uh, they gave me a chance to give a, a seminar, a lunchtime seminar, which is really it's a social gathering of the faculty. They bring their bag of lunch and they sit down and some guy's talking and they don't even pay attention really. It's social. I come back to this place I resigned from and I want to present this new science. So I'm talking about the membrane as an information processor. About right at the end of the lecture, it dawns on me that no one ate lunch. They were sitting there with their bags unopened, staring at me with eyes like saucers, like I come from outer space and I give this lecture and I'm so excited because it made sense out of so much biology that it was like this principle was like a keystone 
boom. I was so excited. I get to that very end after noticing nobody eats lunch. A minute or two later, I conclude and I say, thank you very much. Nothing. They sat there, an entire room filled with people. I said, thank you very much. Nobody moved. No one said a word. No sound. I'm standing up in the front looking like at this most awkward moment of life. I just gave what I thought was the most beautiful idea. And they looked at me and nobody said a word. Not one person stayed behind to ask me a question. I followed through and 20 years later, plus science has recognized a new field called epigenetics, which is the science I was describing without having a name for the field. So I was like 20 years ahead of the current revolution because now the revolution is indeed not only the environment, it's our perceptions of the environment that control our biology. You are the creator of this life. You are the one that creates wellness or disease. Cancer is not caused by a gene. Cancer is caused by lifestyle, environment, perceptions, belief. And that's why spontaneous remissions of cancer are so important because they reveal when a person changes their beliefs, a disease can instantly disappear. And all of a sudden you start to realize, oh my God, I am controlling this. I am the master of my biology. And once you understand that, freedom, freedom from fear, fear of illness, disease, and sickness, which is actually just a reflection of a, a weakness, not a body, but a weakness of consciousness. Our thoughts and our beliefs can alter every gene in our body to create over 3,000 variations of every gene that we have in our body, which means what? The way we look at the world, how we respond to the world, is adjusting our genetics. Less than 1% of disease is connected to genetics. 90% or more of disease is actually due to a lifestyle and belief and behavior that we're beginning to recognize that illness is not the result of organic foundation. Illness is a consciousness process that we have unknowingly been operating by controlling our biology based on how we see the world. You are creating your life experiences, you're creating your biology, you're creating your genetics. And if you become aware of it, you can become a master 